everyone, Karen Roby and Ed Bod here for ZDNet, talking today about a great article that you've put together here, uh, Ed, and it's titled, Five Mistakes to Avoid When Choosing a Laptop Docking Station. And this is something we've talked about before. I know uh, back in early March, we talked about docking stations. So I think a good place to start, though, make sure we're all on the same page here. Uh, when we talk about a docking station, um, you know, what exactly are we talking about? Okay, well, you know, you, and last March, I remember we talked about that because it was right before uh, we all started working from home and yeah. it was all brand new then and we didn't know how long this was going to last and now we know <clears throat> it might be a while. Uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, I put together a list, I did a whole bunch of research. There's a huge number of laptop docking stations on the market. I mean, just a huge number. And I chose, to, it's a dozen, maybe a few more than a dozen out there. And the whole idea of these is you've got a laptop, but you're spending most of your time working at a desk. You're doing Zoom calls with people, you're working on documents and such. And so that laptop's kind of cramped. And so, you know, you want a bigger monitor, you want a full-size keyboard, uh, you want a wired network connection so your Zoom calls aren't always glitching out and everything. So uh, laptop docking station is a little box, typically, typically rectangular, although there are some interesting form factors out there. And it has, you make one connection to your laptop and with that connection, you get power for your laptop. You get a video display that drives your big monitor or maybe monitors. Uh, you get wired network connection um, and you get lots of ports, USB ports in particular, uh, but also other kinds of uh, connections, uh, audio connections, for example, that you can make. But the whole, but the real key to a laptop docking station, it is, it is literally one connection that you make. And, uh, you know, and so that's the, that's the whole magic of it. You plug that in and boom, you're at your desktop fully productive. You unplug that and you can, you know, you can take it out to the back porch or you can uh, take it into the living room, do a little work or, you know, if you're going into the office, uh, you know, for a day or two every month, you can bring your laptop in there. But when you're at your, at your desk at home, you plug in that docking station and your laptop turns into a full desktop PC. All right, Ed, so let, let's talk about, you know, whenever, especially when it comes to tech and when you're comparing products, deciding what to go with, uh, there are things to consider besides price, of course. So talk a little bit about what people need to be looking for here. Right, exactly. And, and that was one of the fascinating things about putting this together. Uh, obviously, you know, I couldn't test all of these, uh, of these docking stations, but I tested a, a representative sample of them and some of them look good on paper. Um, and, you know, and then you, then you, uh, you get them in there and you discover, well, you know, they've got this little, this little issue or two with them. But in other cases, it was a matter of, you know, the, the, maybe the specs were absolutely identical, but just the way that they were implemented was different uh, and different enough that it would impact the way that you work. So I came up with five questions uh, to ask to make sure that you don't make a mistake when buying one of these things. The, the first question is Thunderbolt or not Thunderbolt? And, you know, uh, mostly for these lap, laptop docking stations, we're talking about USB type C connections. So a single uh, connection you can make, it, you know, it can supply all sorts of things. But the interesting thing is that uh, USB C is implemented in different ways on different laptops. And on some laptops, you have this technology called Thunderbolt 3. Uh, Thunderbolt 4 is coming too, but, uh, but you've got Thunderbolt. And Thunderbolt, very powerful, can deliver a lot of data, uh, a lot of video signal and such. There are other computers though that have USB-C connections and will support one of these docking stations, but they don't have the Thunderbolt technology. And so you really want to, if you've got a Thunderbolt PC, you want to have a Thunderbolt docking station. If you have a, a non-Thunderbolt laptop, doesn't uh, you know, has USB-C connections, you probably want to avoid a Thunderbolt docking station because you're gonna, you're not going to be taking uh, advantage of the capabilities that it has, and in some cases, it might not even work properly. So that's a, a real key thing to work uh, to look for. There is don't just look for that USB-C 
uh, connection, but find out whether it has Thunderbolt or not and make sure that you match that up with your laptop. Okay. Uh, the second thing is uh, make sure it has enough, does it have enough power for your laptop? Now, uh, most of the docking stations that I looked at, uh, typically the mid-range ones will deliver, you know, somewhere between 45 and 60 watts of power over USB Type-C power delivery, PD, they call it. Um, and that's fine for most laptops, but there are some laptops, especially large ones with big processors, the kind of things that people use for video processing and image processing that require uh, bigger power supplies. And if you have a laptop like that, you want to make sure that the laptop docking station that you get can, can deliver enough power to it, or you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're using your laptop and it's slowly running out of power, even though it's plugged in. You really don't want that to happen. And you don't want to discover that after you've spent two or three or $400 for a docking station. Okay. Uh, third question is, does it have enough ports and are they the right kind of ports? Um, and, and this one's really, really tricky. You sort of have to, you know, you sort of have to psychoanalyze yourself and say, okay, what kind of, of uh, devices am I going to use with this docking station? Am I going to have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse that doesn't need things plugged in? Or do I want a wired keyboard and mouse? And so I need to have, you know, two of those. Well, for those, you can just have a plain old USB to uh, 2.0 connection. You can sit on the back of the docking station, you know, even. Um, but, you know, but for, if you've got a high speed device, uh, you need a USB 3.0 connection. If you've got devices that use USB type C to connect, you need a USB uh, C connection there. So you need the right type of ports uh, otherwise, you're going to be saddling yourself with a bunch of adapter cables and little dongles and stuff. And that's the whole, the whole point of getting one of these things is so that you're not uh, using things like that. Um, but uh, you also want to make sure that you have the right number of them. Otherwise, you're going to say, oh, I have to unplug the printer so I can plug in the scanner, which again, sort of defeats the purpose of productivity. But the other thing to look at when you're looking at ports is, uh, are they powered? ports because you might want to plug in your phone, right? Uh, you know, you, you can, you know, instead of having a charger there, you can just plug it into the USB port there. But if you have a USB port and it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have the ability to deliver power to your mobile device, then oops, you're not going to be able to use it as a charger. So you, you, you sort of have to make your, uh, your short list of these docking stations and then really dig into those spec sheets to make sure that it's going to meet your needs for those things. Number four, uh, does the video hardware drive the monitor or monitors that you're going to have? And this one can be uh, kind of tricky. If you just have a single, uh, what they call a full HD monitor, 1920 by 1080 or so, uh, almost any docking station will do plug it in, you know, HDMI uh, or DisplayPort or whatever kind of, a, uh, of cable it has, and it'll drive that monitor. But where it gets kind of tricky is if you want to put a big monitor in there, a 4K or 5K display, and it gets really tricky if you want to put two 4K displays together side by side and sort of, you know, set up mission control there in your home office. And, you know, if you want to do that, then you really need to look carefully at the specs for these things. In general, for that kind of super high-powered multi-monitor display situation, you're going to need a Thunderbolt-powered device, okay? And then finally, uh, there's the whole question of ergonomics. And this is something that I didn't really appreciate until I had tried about a half dozen of these things. Um, some of these things are really heavy. And you might think that's a bad thing until you realize that if, uh, if it's heavy and you go to plug a device into it, it's not going to move around on you. It's going to sit there when you plug it in. So heavy is, is good. Um, uh, you know, whereas a lightweight one, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to reach behind it and sort of hang on to it as you're, you know, plugging your USB cable into it. Um, you know, so ergonomics matter there. Ergonomics also matter uh, for where the ports are on the thing. If all the ports are are in the back of it, 
and you've only got like one in the front and you realize, oh shoot, I'm constantly plugging and unplugging, you know, these two devices. I'm going to always have be having to pick this thing up and find exactly the right port behind it and plug this in. And that's going to get uh, kind of tedious. And then the one thing that I discovered that that really took me by surprise is that you know typically these docking stations have a, a cable that comes out of them. It's uh, in a lot of cases it's hardwired into them, and you really want to check and make sure that it's long enough and that it's on the right side to work with the way that your desk is arranged because there's nothing more frustrating than saying, okay, well, I've got this thing over here by the, you know, by my network cable and by my power outlet, but I now have to make this connector from it snake all the way around to the other side of my laptop because that's where the USB-C port is. And if you don't think about that in advance, you're not going to realize that it's a problem until you, you know, take the thing out of the box and try plugging everything together. So those are the, those are sort of the five questions that I came up with, including a few that, you know, you're not even going to think about until, uh, you know, you've already opened that box. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's uh, always those uh, things that we don't think about, Ed. And that's why it's great that you do these uh, for us to help give us some kind of a blueprint, you know, for, for what we're uh, looking to do. So do these apply to any special circumstances here? Yeah, um, you know, they, the, uh, in general, the, uh, the, the USB Type-C uh, ports are, you know, they're, they're becoming standard on every Windows laptop. So if you, for, so for most Windows laptops, your Dell, your HP, uh, your Lenovo, uh, the, the uh, docking stations that we're talking about here are, you know, are just, are just going to work, you know, Thunderbolt or no Thunderbolt, they're just going to work there. Where, it, uh, where it can get a little tricky is if you have either a MacBook or a, uh, or a Microsoft Surface device. For MacBooks, MacBooks have Thunderbolt uh, support. Typically, the modern devices do uh, have Thunderbolt ports and use USB Type C. But I would be inclined to go look for a device that specifically offers uh, MacBook compatibility. Uh, they, you know, trying to take a, a device that's designed for generic support for Windows laptops and use it on a Mac uh, can be tricky sometimes. So I, you know, I'd look for a guarantee of Mac compatibility. And in fact, there's some devices that are made by companies that you know, specialize in doing things for the Mac. So that's, that's one special circumstance. The other one is the uh, Microsoft Surface devices. Uh, those don't typically use USB Type-C as the only connector. They use a proprietary connector called uh, the Surface connector. Now, some of the newer Surface models have USB-C connectors in them, but I would still, you know, if you're, if, if you got a Surface Book or a Surface Pro 7 or later, um, you know, you, even though it has a USB-C, I would say get one that has the, uh, that USB, that has the Surface connector on it. Uh, it's going to dramatically reduce your short list of things to look at because there's only a handful of those out on the market. Um, but there's some really interesting choices available to you there. And, you know, I'd say if you've, if you've chosen the Microsoft Surface device, get a docking station that's designed specifically for that. All right. Some great advice uh, there, Ed. Always trying to make our decisions a little bit easier. You know, sometimes we get overwhelmed by, you know, I find myself doing that too with a, a decision like this and there's so many different options and things you want to consider. And so it's very helpful when we have you here uh, for this information, putting it together for us. My pleasure. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, for much more on this, make sure you check out uh, Ed's full article and all of his articles and videos and much, much more on ZDNet. Thanks so much for watching today.